December the 18th. We just finished all the committee meetings, and this council meeting is being called to order at 7 53. 7.53, December the 18th, we read. Mr. Mays? Present. Mr. Davis? Present. Mr. Guerra? Present. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Present. <clears throat> Mr. Briggs? Present. Ms. Worthing? Present. Thank you. Okay. I would ask Ms. Jerry Winfrey Carter to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. deceased member or a deceased person in the community. Ms. Brown, that would be Jackie King. Jackie King, um, I'd ask for a moment of silence. Is there any other request? A moment of silence for Mr. Jackie King. in the audience, and he's with this group. I don't see him. Pastor, preacher, can you come forward? And I'll tell you why. And if you choose to do it, you can offer us some type of prayer at the beginning of our meeting if you choose to. Would you like to do a prayer or a blessing? I will do that gladly, sir. Is your mic on? It is on. Okay. What is your name? My name is D'Artagnan Jamerson. Minister Jamerson. Pastor Jamerson, yes, sir. Can you spell your first name? D-A-R-T-A-N-Y-A-N. Jamerson. Jamerson, J-A-M-E-R-S-O-N. Pastor Jamerson, I would ask that you lead these proceedings and start them off with a prayer of blessing. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you for this moment, for this time, for this purpose, Father. In spite of all things, this is a day that you've made, and we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. Father, we honor you for the reason that we're here, for the purpose that we're here, for the things that are going to edify and uplift and unite the city of Flint. Continue to make us good stewards over the things that you give us and good stewards over the things that you allow to come through our hands. Bless this council, bless this city, bless our mayor. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Now, look. I'm going to read this um, disorderly person city code and subsection. Hopefully, as a Santa Claus, I won't get throughout the day. Nobody will get throughout. Everything will be smooth. We're in the holiday spirit. So for your reading and hearing, I would read this. Any person that persists in disrupting this meeting will be in violation of Flint City Code Section 31-10, disorderly conduct, assault and battery, and disorderly persons, and will be subject to arrest for a misdemeanor. Any person who prevents the peaceful and orderly conduct of any meeting will be given one warning. If they persist in disturbing the meeting, that individual will be subject to arrest violators shall be removed from the meeting, and that goes for the chairman and presiding officer as well. And so with that, I would ask my colleagues, is there any requests for changes or additions to the agenda? Ms. Brown, do you want us to add add-ons or just keep them separate or put them as part of the master resolution or do that at what other time? So you want them as part? Exactly. Okay, so if there's no objections, the two add-ons will become a part of the master resolution. Any more changes or additions to the agenda? Ms. Wilcox, did you need a special order for your group? Sure. Okay, so I'll ask for a special order for Ms. Wilcox at the beginning um, prior to the presentation of minutes. And then at the end, before final comments, I would like to see any new business. <clears throat> any, uh, any more changes or additions to the agenda? Y'all ready to vote on them proposed changes? Y'all gonna help me remember? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Garrett said he ain't gonna help me remember. He probably will. I'd like to entertain a motion to um, affect those agenda changes. Okay. Mr. Griggs? So moved. He's so moved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Ms. Um, Winfrey Carter has been moved and properly second. Any other discussion on the agenda changes? Roll call. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Let's see. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. The vote is uh, six yes, zero no. Six yes and zero no. So that would take us to the first agenda change which would be a special order for Ms. Wilcox. Mr. Guerra, you are the next highest ranking officer. Could I ask you to chair this meeting and I would be excused and I'll be right back. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Pardon? So I'd like to, we, we asked for some time. I know you have three resolutions in front of you. I appreciate you moving them to the council and we've reached out or tried to reach out, reach out to the majority of council members and had conversations with them about the three resolutions that you have in front of you. But I wanted to provide an opportunity for the members of our developer team, our uh, partner, um, our, our people uh, partner, and the Flint Housing Commission, who is our co-applicant and co-grantee for this $30 million grant to come here and be available to answer questions, but it didn't look like you had questions. Hopefully we answered all of them, and I can't imagine that you wouldn't support the resolutions, but wanted to provide an opportunity for them to briefly kind of give an overview of their organization and, um, and what those, those resolutions do. So I have Lori Harris, um, who's our um, 
with North Star develop Development. I have Dartanian Jamerson with Mott Workforce Development. And I have Ebony Nugent from the Flint Housing Commission and their team. So they're each going to briefly talk about just the roles for the three resolutions that you see in front of you tonight. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. I'll be very brief. Um, as um, we were before you um, at your committee meeting um, right before Thanksgiving, I just want to reiterate congratulations to the community for winning this um, you know, uh, grant. It's really a, a prestigious thing and something that we're committed to doing our very best. Uh, North Star's role in this um, project, we are your housing developer. So what we'll be doing for each of the four new construction phases is we'll be, um, in addition to the grant funds that are identified in the resolution, we'll be uh, seeking uh, tax credits. We did receive tax credits for the first phase, seeking additional funding so that we can uh, construct each of the units that are called for in the plan. Um, so once again, we're humbled to be a part of this, um, this effort, and we uh, commit to do our very, very best for the community. Good evening. Um, my name is Ebony Nugent. I'm the Deputy Executive Director at Flint Housing Commission, and I have Mr. Patrick Julian with, um, with me here. As you know, we're the co-applicant for the Choice Neighborhood Grant. Um, Lori, as Lori said, we are very humbled and thankful to be in this position. Um, we're excited. We're excited for our residents. Our residents have been waiting some time for this, so we're just we're ready to push forward with our efforts. Good evening, uh, D'Artagnan Jamerson representing Mott Community College. I am the Director of Workforce Development. With me I have uh, Danielle Brown who is the Director of Programs for the Flint and Genesee Literacy Network. And uh, we're excited that the, the city saw fit to um, assign Mott Community College as the people uh, overseer for this particular grant. And we're excited about the things that are going to happen. And what our process is really going to be is simple, that we're going to engage and make sure we expand on partnerships that we have across um, the entire county and even, even within the state to make sure that we address what the people are going to need as they prepare to move from one location to the next. So whatever that may be from child care, early child development to career pathways, establishing career pathways for individuals so that we can attack the systemic issue that they that they have faced that many of them are third fourth generation living in public housing so we want to attack that at the root so that we can really move them to a new place not just a new home but a new place in their thinking as well. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate that. And if there are any questions, um, I know that you will be acting on the resolution. But if there's any questions uh, for them, it would be appropriate, I think, for you to ask. Um, otherwise, um, I thank them for being here, too. Ms. Worthing. I don't have any questions. Oh. <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you all for being here. Um, I had the opportunity to see the North Star uh, homes in Detroit, and it is an amazing uh, opportunity for Flint. And I'm very excited that we are, we've got the ball, uh, um, or we've got it running. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't even have my words today. I'm excited you're here, and I'm excited this is happening, and I'm excited for, especially for the residents in Atherton East who get to move into new uh, homes that are not in a floodplain. <laughs> and um, I would like to say thank you all. Thank you for your collaborative efforts in making this happen. I am excited. I cannot wait. This is going to be good for the Fifth Ward as well as um, the Ninth Ward. So we thank you. We thank you guys. Thank you, um, Ms. Wilcox. Is there any, anybody else? Thank you. At thank this, you all. At this time, while they're there, I would like to entertain a motion to approve uh, resolutions 180621, 180622, and 180620, which are the three contracts that they're just discussed. Um. So moved. Mr. <laughs> Griggs um, moved it. Ms. Worthing, did you second I that? I second it. <laughs> Any other discussion? 
Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, it's got to be a roll call. Oh, roll call. Okay, Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Tara? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Okay. The vote is uh, five yes, zero no. On uh, one eight zero six two zero, one eight zero six two one, and one eight zero six two two legislation. Thank you. Uh, now we're on to uh, presentation of minutes. Go get drunk. There are none. Public hearings. Mr. President, we have two public hearings. First is uh, five public hearings. The first is public hearing is in reference to ordinance number 180567 which is an ordinance to amend chapter 18, entitled Taxation, Funds, and Purchasing. Section 18-4.1, service charge in lieu of taxes for housing facilities for certain persons of the Code of the City of Flint by adding or amending subsection U concerning communities first incorporated, also known as Berkeley Place Apartments. It's for an amendment uh, that's uh, will con commence construction on or before March 29th, 2020, for three years after the initial pilot approval date. Is there any speakers for this public hearing? For the record, in 2018, Ms. Wilcox uh, done a good job in negotiating these house projects from Ethelton Terrace into the city of Flint on Saginaw Street. But the rest of you guys are always talking about next right. year. Ms. Wilcox Mr. done a good job to, uh, Mr. I want to say, Mr. in the town hall, Mr. Mr. Mitchell, right? we're what? asking you to be germane to the subject of oh, the my public hearing. What, read my name? No, it's germane to the subject. Germane, what that means, sir? Relate your comments to the subject of public Relate hearing. 180567. Uh, that's uh, that's the, about the uh, budget committee, ain't it? Tell me, break it down. <laughs> Tell me, speak in praying language, man. Come on. It is a public hearing for ordinance number one eight zero five six seven, ordinance to amend chapter eighteen, section eighteen four dot one, the housing facilities of certain persons, the code of the city of Flint, by adding subsection communities first Inc. Hey, I'm the I'm the citizen of Flint, man. I'm talking, speaking on the situation now. If you allow me to, with your riff raff self. <laughs> and listen, and uh, before the year go out, Miss Wilcock is doing what you you people should have done and Miss the council, East Side Council lady up talking about get the mayor and she ain't here in the mayor right, at five oh one. Like you. she can't do business in government ops and up. Uh, thank and you, you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, yeah, thank you for letting me address you a little bit up here. Thank you. Is there any other speakers for this public? Good evening, Council. My name is Paul Hearing. I reside at 525 Mason Street. And I really just need a little clarity. Um, I am currently in the, um, I guess, we are currently in a battle with communities first about building an apartment complex in historic Carriage Town. And I'm not sure if this is the property that they're talking about. And if it is not, I will take my seat. Thank you. Good evening, um, <clears throat> Quincy Murphy. I think in the near future, which are rules and presentation, I think any time a developer is doing any kind of um, development and it's their project, I think it's important that they be at city council meeting to give a um, um, brief, simplified description of the project that they're trying to do because they, Y'all got an ordinance in place right now, but if we wanted to know what it is that they trying to do, they not, they not even in the audience to even address the issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any additional speakers? Hearing none, this public hearing is closed. 
Next, next public hearing. The next public hearing is a public hearing for ordinance number 180592, which is an ordinance to amend chapter 18 on taxation, funding, and purchasing uh, service in lieu of tax credits for housing facilities by adding subsection Y concerning Clark Cummins Limited Dividend Housing, LLC. Note the adopted ordinance to become effective immediately upon publication. Is there any speakers for this public hearing? Uh, for the record, Council, about the taxing, about them 40 town holes for the police department. Uh, Miss, Mr. Mitchell, this is about the, uh, the taxation ordinance for Hope Commons, Clark, Clark Commons. You got to make it relevant to Clark Commons taxation. Clark Commons, hey, speak English, man. You up there, written dropping? Speak up, <laughs> man. Come on. You, to speak to speak on the subject matter for public hearings, we're talking about the Clark Commons. The Clark Commons. Oh. Now listen here, sir. Public speaking is next. If you'd like to speak then during about I meeting. Oh. All right. Thank you, Mr. Green. Ah. Is there any other speakers? Hearing none. This public hearing is. Is there any is there any public other public speakers? Is there any public speakers? Hearing none, this public hearing is closed. All right, this brings us to the uh, public speaking part of the agenda. I appreciate Mr. Guerra and um, Madam Clerk. Do we have any public speakers? And if so, Mr. President, our first public speaker is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening, Council. My name is R. L. Mitchell. I reside at 759 East Linden Avenue on the north side of town. Uh, Mr. President, and Mr. President again, and the absent president. Notice all the president is absent besides President Mays of the council. And Miss Fields, she's absent, and Miss Galloway absent. The main ones who deal with government ops. But I want you to know to both all three presidents, I know you're listening, because Donald Trump, you're the main one. Got three days before you make this whole nation go into police brutality. And we in a situation in Flint, all you got to do is come to Flint and go get with the uh, Mott boys and they'll finance your, your money to, to economic, your so-called Mexican peoples over to Flint and all these economic buildings we're building. That's all you got to do. But, Mr. President, we as the peoples of Flint want you to know that we're going to be here till you get here to fix this situation. And up there declaring the whole world, the government shut down. That's unprecedented. That's the closest thing to impeachment. You already, they already declared you impeachment by you talking like that. That's why it's unprecedented. Talking that stuff like we and you ain't getting no recussion, recussion, but talk like my brother. Everybody back there eating Christmas dinner. I told him to bring me a meal out of there, like the people's in Chicago. Everybody eating some meat. He gonna bring his and put his hand on the. With his fever, what the hell? I can't announce that high class fever he got. He, was, he said he'd be in the monks uh, 24 hours, everybody here be scarlet fever. This man got scarlet fever and, and, he, and he go put his hand on my barbecue chicken and offer me something. Look at him over there grinning. That's just like you, Mr. President, Donald Trump. They know the people's in, in drinking that nasty Flint River water with General Motors, poisoning everybody in Flint. And, going out talking about tax sensation, where their money at, and nobody checked them. Who you think you is, Mr. President? Yeah. And the Vatican, talking about taking a verse out of the Lord's Prayer. Talking about leading us not into temptation. They already started what you going to, come on with it, Mr. President. Hey, that's a, Merry Christmas to you all and Happy New Year. Take that. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. We will respond to the public speaking um, after the last public speaker. Do we have more, Ms. Brown? Yes, our next speaker is Mr. Quincy Murphy. Mr. Murphy? 
Mr. Quincy Murphy. And we will respond after the last speaker, according to our rules. Good afternoon. Uh, Merry Christmas to y'all and Happy New Year's. I know this is our last council meeting um, before 2019, um, but I come here tonight just to um, give some thanks to some people who have worked with us over the, the past year. Um, the mayor and administration, Parks and Recreation Department that helped us get new swings and new playgrounds up to Dewey Park, keep Genesee County beautiful. Um, Isaiah Oliver and Lynn Williams with the Community Foundation of Greater Flint that helped us um, secure a $50,000 grant to put in new basketball courts and tennis courts. And we just put up the new lights at Dewey Park tonight. So um, I had to go and turn them on and they, it looked good. So if you guys get a chance, go drive up there and see how it looked at Dewey Park. It hasn't had no lights in the park in over 30 years, probably longer. And it looked really good. So I just want to give some thanks out to some people who have um, paved the way to help us in the community. But on another note, um, I had a situation um, with when we was built, doing the playground equipment. The process was we put in an application downstairs in the blight department and they have the land bank cleanup crews go and clean up on weekends if we're doing the project. And what I was trying to do is get um, the vacant lots across the street cleaned up prior to them coming to put in a new playground equipment. Never came. They brought a dumpster, went downstairs. Garcia, what's his name, Rahul, went and ordered the dumpster. No land bank crews cleaned up the trash. The trash still sitting there. I don't get paid to do the, what I do in the community. And for me to go out there and pick up all of that trash, it would be a cold day in hell. And then to see them, this is right around in the time when they was cleaning up the trailer park on the east side. So it made it seem to me as if they was being nepotism and picking and choosing what they wanted to do. I ain't with that. I ain't been back to no land bank advisory board meeting. They could really put somebody else on that because I'm not going. I refuse to sit on the board and all the work that I do in the community when I come and ask them one time in one year or two years or three years, could y'all come and bring some cleanup people to come clean up that trash still sitting over there. I'm not picking it up. And if that man downstairs that work in the blight department get paid to coordinate to pick it up, I think he should be picking it up. And next year in 2019, I'm gonna be on it with this grant because Suzanne Wilcox and whoever, I don't know where they putting that blight money, but it ain't working in our neighborhood. And we don't want no crumbs. Don't give us no $1,000, no $2,500, or no $3,000 and think you're doing something for us. We need some millions of dollars to clean that neighborhood up. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And I'm glad you didn't stop me, Eric Mays. And happy Kwanzaa. You know, I give you all kind of minutes, but we got one more speaker. We will respond to the speakers after the last speaker. Our last speaker is Mr. Paul Herring. Mr. Herring. <coughs> Good evening, Council. My name is Paul Herring. I reside at 525 Mason Street, and 2017 has been a great year. You know, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always gotten. If you want something you never had before, you got to do something you've never done before. And this year, this year, the city council has gone digital. We have upgraded our equipment in the television room. We are using computers and not analog tape. We're using digital files and not DVDs. We are in the 21st century. And I want to stay here. I want to stay here because it's nice. I'm sure you guys have gotten the feedback from the YouTube broadcast. I'm sure you've gotten the feedback from the Facebook broadcast. I'm sure you've gotten the feedback from the public access broadcast. 
and I almost forgot one, WFOV 92.1, also broadcast your media. When you talk about being open and transparent, you guys really are. There is no other government entity, no other establishment in the city of Flint that is open and as transparent as you are. How many outlets did I just name? We got radio, we got television, we got the internet. What's left? What's left? Well, for me, it's trying to make the best presentation I can. I'm still hampered a little bit by my internet access here, but we are working on that. And it, too, will get better. I'm hoping in 2018 to incorporate your agendas right into the live streams so people can read the things you're reading and comment on the things you're discussing. We're going to take transparency to the next level. We're going to allow people maybe to vote <coughs> so you can see what their feelings are on this project or that project. We're going to pose questions for the betterment of the city of Flint. Not nonsense, not Rudy Poop stuff, but stuff that's going to move this city forward. And I want to thank you guys. I want to thank each and every one. Brother Maurice, I want to thank you. Sister Eva, got to thank you. Dr. Griggs, I got to thank you. Sister Winfrey, Inez, Brother Mays, you guys had the vision. You guys had the vision. And now we've got the ability. In all things purely social, guys, we need to be as separate as the fingers. But we need to be one in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. All right, that was our last speaker. We had three speakers, Mr. R.L. Mitchell, Mr. Quincy Murphy, and then finally we had Paul Heron. Any council people wish to respond to any other speakers, Mr. Davis? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to respond to mainly Mr. Quincy and Mr. Heron. Uh, Quincy, uh, the difference we've been seeing with that, that charter issue and well is the master plan, I'll call it, is inclusive of everybody, every resident in the city. And that's why I always stood in, your pain is the same pain I have. With, to me, it is a discrepancy when people pick and choose. Uh, when it comes to cleanups, the, the, in my side of town, they're elderly. And we have to organize as a neighborhood association. They drop off dumpsters, and you got elderly people trying to fill the dumpsters. That's not right. We got a blight department that needs to, in 2019, pursue the blight that's out there first before you do a blight court or any other kind of court. It's dumpings over there on, on Proctor Street, Rankin Street, that's been sitting there year after year. But yet, people get harassed for cars parked on their own property. We got to put the ace, the cart where it belongs, back behind that horse. No big eyes and little U's. The mayor hired a wonderful staff of administration that's there. If I'm hired as a council member, I'm responsible to do my job. If the mayor gives someone a job or downstairs, if they hire you to do a job, under your supervisor, you should do your job. Ain't no way in the world downtown should be clean. I don't care about DDA, Hurley Hospital, Kettering, and all the other excuses. Treat the whole city the same. In 2019, when we do constituent complaints, I expect them to be done within a year, because when I first sat in this chair, I show you a pile of my turned in whip pictures, and I could count the percentage very small how many been rectified. So Quincy, you're absolutely right. And Paul, it is very vital to have the type of publicity or media coverage that you get as council. And I'd like to say thank you for even allowing me to be on your station. Thank you. Mr. Gear. Yeah, I want to say uh, first off with Mr. Mitchell, uh, thank you for your concerns. I'm glad that you do pay attention. Uh, and I am feeling better from that situation. Uh, Mr. Murphy, I do want to, um, you thank some individuals, but I want to thank you. I know you do a lot of work in the community and especially at Dewey Park. And like I said, I drove by earlier and you, it's looking better and better and better every time. And I also want to thank you for what I seen you do today, which was going around and boarding up homes. Uh, I don't think you get the proper recognition, so I want to thank you for that and all the stuff you've done and continue to work with you. Um, 
also, and Mr. Herring, I think you do a good job with the recordings. I know lots of presidents watch it, listen to it on the radio, and watch it live, and so does your staff back there. You guys just keep up the recordings, and I'll see you next year. Miss Winfrey Carter. Yes. Um, <clears throat> first, I would like to say thank you, Quincy, for all of your hard work that you put in, you know, over in your um, community, as far as um, the Dewey um, Park and everything. Thank you. You know, um, also, I wanted to let you know, I, I don't know if you realize that they are going to be having a meeting on January 9th for the grants again. So make sure you go to that workshop so that you can find out what it is that you need to do to apply for a grant for um, Blight. There's, I think, um, four different categories or five different categories, and Blight Elimination is one, okay? So make sure that you do that. And again, thank you. And uh, Mr. Paul Heron, I want to thank you for all the hard work that you put in to making sure that you broadcast our meetings and getting them on to the different circuits that you, um, uh, you know, put our meetings on. Thank you for your hard work. That's it. Mr. Griggs or Ms. Worthy, any comments? Mr. Griggs. Yeah, Mr. Murphy, I've been following your uh, progress at Dewey Park. Is that mic on? Every time yeah. you do something, uh, oh. Okay, he said it was Every on. time you do something at Dewey Park, I've, I've been following the progress from painting the lines the other day and whatnot and the lights. Uh, I think it's great what you've done for them. And good luck to Mr. Harry. That's it. Ms. Worthy, come on. <laughs> Merry Christmas, and thanks for all you do, Quincy. All right. Um, I would say to Mr. Mitchell, continue to show up down here. I listen to you each and every time you speak, and I clearly understand what you be saying. Today you spoke about President Trump, and I'm listening to what you're saying. He is threatening to shut part of the government down. Continue to come to this council. We know you all across the city, and we appreciate you. I do. So I appreciate you and your words, what you say, Mr. Mitchell. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Mr. Murphy, I would urge you, don't get off of that land bank advisory board. Stay on there. That would be um, a great loss. You know what's happening in the community, stick with it. I hear the protests and I'm kind of pissed because I know that Raul can borrow from that um, street department and get that cloth and reach down and pick up trash. Sometime when we do cleanups, there's so much stuff um, that big door can open, but we can't walk it in there. Sometimes you need bobcats and whatever. I want this council to remember this conversation because I said earlier in the year, we need to buy the black department their own big cloth truck and we could clean up all across the city. So that's going to be a hot agenda item. If y'all can help me remember it, um, Mr. Griggs and Mr. Gere, Ms. Winfrey Carter, Ms. Worthen Davis, when we get the budget, we need that big claw to pick up and put in them dumpsters and keep these wards clean a little better. And we don't want Raul and Blight always having to borrow that equipment from um, streets. Um, Mr. Herring, I do hear you say we're on the radio, TV, but we are digital. And I seen myself in a little digital looking at them little squares popping up. So if them little squares popping up and we ain't getting good reception, come back the first meeting in January and let's see if we can clear up our Wi-Fi connection in City Hall. With that being said, let's move through this agenda. Madam Clerk, where are we at? We're uh, uh, under communications. Of course, we have none. Appointments, we have none. Then we're uh, on the right. Right, right there. 
at appointments we had, Ms. Worthy, Ms. Winfrey Carter, and I think Ms. Galloway or Mr. Guerra, somebody had some appointments to the review board. And we gonna wait till the first of the year on those appointments to the review board. Yeah, so we checking some things out. So they didn't come tonight, but they'll be coming in the future for those who had appointments. Ms. Brown, continue. I should indicate that as it relates to those appointments, it, it does not impact the board of the Board of Review because they will not be meeting again for a while. So that gives us time to kind of go through to be sure that the records are correct and so forth. Okay. Any other discussion? Ms. Brown, continue. Okay, with the resolutions, uh, would you like me to go through to let you know what's already been moved and approved? Yes, so you can. There's no confusion, okay? Um, Y'all following the agenda? On, on 590, that was postponed to come back to legislative committee. 591 was um, referred to legislative. We've already done earlier votes on 180620. We skipped 6180618 is here, right? It's here. So that will be a part of the master of I'm saying what's already done. So 180620. Been done already earlier after they spoke right six to one also was done earlier after they spoke six to two was also done after they spoke so that leaves you i believe with six resolutions six one eight six two three can you go back what about eight one zero six two three that's what you're saying that's the one i was getting really Okay. Okay, the next one is 623, 624, 625, 626. And then we have the two add ons. That's what I got. One is a settlement with Charles Van Vanetta. And the second would be the Chamber of Commerce Consulting Services for $10,000. I would entertain a motion to. Um, approve the resolutions that the clerk read into the record. Um, Madam Worthy. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the master resolution. Um, and that would be I'll the second. resolutions that the clerk just read into the record, Mr. Griggs. I'll second that. So it's been moved and properly second to move the master resolutions. Any discussion and or separations on the master resolution? I have a question. Sure. Um, what about resolution 180627? That was uh, postponed. Yeah, that was postponed. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it okay. was postponed. Okay, thanks. And it was postponed to what? Governmental okay. ops? Yes. Okay. Mr. Garrett's committee. Mr. Garrett, you did a good job getting those other three resolutions moved. Um, any discussion on any of these resolutions from the administration, Mr. Branch, Mr. Anybody, Mr. Newsom? We all set on the master resolution, no separations? Okay, let me make sure I ain't got no separations. I don't have any separations. If there's no other discussion and no separations, then I would ask for a roll call vote on the master resolution roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. <laughs> Madam Clerk, could you continue to move us down the agenda? Okay. On your um, ordinances for first reading, the first ordinance uh, in reference to the CWAC was postponed. So that leaves one, which is 180628. We had no liquor license, did no we? Liquor license. Under liquor license, I had a request come to me today somebody called me and they was asking 
Did we have any law or resolution prohibiting Christmas Day liquor sales? And uh, this is signed by Peter Bade. And um, I also got attached licensing and regulatory affairs as it relates to the Michigan Liquor Control from your office, the city attorney. So it looks like we can't do anything locally um, prohibiting Christmas Day sales. I'm going to check into it a little more. This is a resolution um, as the governing body prohibits sales of beer, wine, spirits, and liquor between 9 a.m. December 24th. So this is a resolution. I'll see what the actual statute says as I read the um, Department of License and Regulatory Affairs and then attach to that is Michigan Liquor Control Code of 1998-436.2113. So, first reading, Ms. Brown, you say we got an ordinance? Yes. And so that would be what, 180? 180628. 628, yes. and that's the one we dealt with in committee dealing with um, Amendment of Ordinance, Chapter 46, Utilities, Article 2, Water and Supply Sewage Disposal System, um, Division 4, Backflow Prevention Section, 46-34, Cross Connection Responsibilities. I'd like to entertain a motion as it relates to the reading, the first reading, Ms. Brown, yes. of that ordinance. I'd like to entertain a motion for a first reading of that particular ordinance. Mr. Griggs. So moved. It's been moved. Um, is there a second for first reading? Mr. I'll second um, Ms. Winfrey Carter. It's been seconded. It's been moved and properly second um, for a first reading of 180628, amendment of the ordinance, chapter 46, utilities, articles, water supply, and sewage. Is there any discussion on that? Any discussion on that? Hearing none, um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. The vote is six yes, zero no. Keep us moving on the agenda, Ms. Brown. Okay, we have two ordinances uh, for second reading and adoption. Two ordinances for second reading and adoption. Ms. Brown, can you give us a little bit about the first one, 180567? Can you read us a title? Okay, uh, just, uh, just for the your records, Mr. Uh, President, uh, those are the two that we had a public hearing on earlier today, where you did have uh, individuals come in to speak from the Housing Commission as well as to, to those. Okay, so this is a service charge in lieu of taxes for housing facilities for certain persons. Um, amendment, ordinance, chapter 18, taxation funds, purchase in article one in general. Um, this is the adoption of them because we've already had so did I entertain a motion I think Mr. Griggs supported it and these both are going together any objections to them going at the same time no objection and then the other one was 180592 okay. or ordinance um, do amend chapter 18 Pardon? taxation funds and purpose, yes, it's been a motion made and properly seconded. As it's not, you don't have a record. That was on the other one. Okay, so then what we'll do, we'll entertain that motion for second reading. Mr. Griggs? So moved. So it's been moved. Is there a second? Mr. Davis? Mr. I second. So it's been moved and seconded um, that we move 180. Five six seven and one eight zero five nine two for second reading and adoption. Everybody understand the motion for second reading and adoption. Is there any discussion on the motion for second reading and adoption?
So the first ones is a pilot is for Communities First, which will erect, own, and operate a housing project identified as Berkeley Place Apartments to serve persons and families of low income. The other one is a pilot is for Clark Commons Limited Dividend Housing Association, LLC, which will own and operate a housing project identified as Clark Commons LLC to serve persons and families of low income. Any more discussion on second reading and adoption? Hearing none, roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Yes. Okay. The vote is five yes, zero no on one eight zero five six seven, one eight zero five nine two. That brings us to any additional council discussion and uh, prior to final comments. Any additional council discussion or new business or anything, Ms. Worthy? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that Kate Fields is home with a sinus infection and that's why she's not here today. Also, uh, you may have gotten two tax bills in the mail for your home. I did, <laughs> and I know several others did. <laughs> and that kind of freaks you out because you think you paid it. Well, the second bill is the correct one and it's less. And so you will be reimbursed uh, or it can go towards um, the overpayment, or the overpayment can go to your summer taxes, your water bill, or you'll be refunded. Did I get that right? All right. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there because I know everyone uh, doesn't like it when they get two bills. And then uh, I just, I have a referral, I guess, um, that I'm just now thinking of. And Mr. Branch, maybe you can help us out. I've gotten several calls um, from my ward about yards being dug up again that's already been dug up uh, specifically Ogama right now do you know if there's a reason why they would dig up the same yard twice or what's going on mr branch no i i would need to have some some specific addresses okay to look them up and i'll be I'll just send me the addresses i'll look them up the only thing i can think of is if they did a hydro vac there and it was inconclusive they went back but if they were dug up twice, it could have been for one, the homeowner wasn't home, they dug it up and found that it was a lead line. And if you're not home, they can't get in your basement, so they can't do anything, so they have to cover it back up. But I really need the addresses. Okay, I'll get those for you, thank you. And um, I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. We have two weeks off, so I will see you again next year. Now don't forget, you still got final comments. Any additional... Oh, I thought that was final no, comments. No, this is um, new or additional council discussion. Wait. You free, you good, you still I got I skipped time. right past it to the end. Yeah, you still got time. <laughs> Mr. Branch, any business before we close out the year? Anything? Okay, you do wish this council a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, don't you? Oh, yes. Can we hear you say that? <laughs> This is the city administrator, y'all. This is the guy who runs stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. This is our go-to guy, hour-to-hour, day-to-day. Mr. Branch? On behalf of the mayor and the administration, we want to miss, uh, wish the city council and the citizens of uh, Flint Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Ain't that a blessing on behalf of the mayor and the administration. I see Alicia Williams come in. Is it anything you want to say to the council before we get out of here? Merry Christmas. Ah, we want to hear you. We want to hear you. Come to the mic. Come to the mic. The people of Flint, we want to hear you. Mr. Murphy, you all set? All right, ain't but two or three of y'all here, so I'm doing this until they object. Mary.
Merry Christmas. Mr. Joe King, anything you need this council to know? All right. I don't have any new business that can't wait to 2019, but, you know, when we finish our final comments, then the clerk has got something that needs to be said before we entertain a motion to adjourn. Any closing comments from any council members? Mr. Guerra? Well, I see Ms. Winfrey Carter, since y'all debating, I'm gonna go with ladies first. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Thank you, um, Councilman Mays. I would like to um, wish all um, a happy holiday season and a happy new year. Um, make sure you spend time with your families, um, get you some rest, and we will return um, in 2019 ready to work. Um, I wish that for all of my colleagues that we can come together and be on one accord and let's um, put the work in to meet the needs of the citizens of Flint. Thank you all and God bless. Thank you, um, Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. It's been a pleasure working with you in 2018. Uh, Ms. Worthen? I already said it. Well, do it again. It's too Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I'm very thankful for two weeks off. <laughs> we'll see you next year. All right, Councilwoman Worthen, uh, Mr. Guerra. Yeah, I just, just want to say how glad I am to see that the Flint Police Department is getting new vehicles. I definitely need that. And the contracts go through uh, in regards to the grant that we received from HUD, Housing and Urban Development. I think that's a great thing for the city of Flint. We're definitely uh, made some huge progress this year in 2018. We've come far away. And in 2019, I think we're going to go even further. And I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. And if you have any concerns or questions like that over the break, still feel free to reach out to me and give me a call. And uh, I'll see you guys next council. Hold on a minute, Mr. Davis. Mr. Griggs, closing comments, wishes, whatever you choose. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Mr. Griggs, I would love to let you borrow my Santa hat, but I know you already got one. Yeah. We've got a real Santa Claus on our um, council. And it's been a pleasure in 2018 as I try to get to know you, Mr. Griggs. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to say happy holidays, Merry Christmas to the council body as well, Lils. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to the staff of the mayor and administration. And also, I'd like for this time of year, we pay close attention to the people under bereavement and people that have less than what we are blessed with. You know, ain't nothing like putting a smile on somebody else's face, especially this time of year. It's hard on a lot of people. Some people enjoying Christmas, some people have lost loved ones this year. And we gotta be mindful. You know, it don't cost nothing to give somebody a smile. So I'm looking forward to next year with this body unified with the administration as well as the law department, working on one accord to really now we gotta, I have a year under my belt that we could really get this business of the city done this year. Happy holidays. All right, Davina, you said something about the rules committee. Just at the last rules committee, you said you were going to announce. Mr. Davis. At the last rules committee meeting, you said you were going to announce when the next rules committee meeting would be today. So, but you don't have to. We can. Mr. Davis, she want to know, do you want to wait or do you want to announce when the rules committee will wait to 219? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Brown is fixing to give us the dates for the new meetings for next year. This is the dates that will be posted and listed for the new meetings next year, both committee and um, regular meeting. Ms. Brown? Okay, our first committee meeting to be held in 2019 will be held on Wednesday, January 9th, 2019, at 5 p commencing at 5 p.m. Committee. That's the committee. And then our next city council meeting will be held on Monday, January 14th, with special affairs at 4.30 and city council meeting at 5.30. We are posting these tomorrow on the city's website. 
as well as throughout City Hall. And of course, I believe you all have all received a copy in your respective mailboxes today. But I felt that for the public's uh, right to know, they should know that the 9th and the 14th of January would be the next council meeting dates. Thank you very much. It's about five minutes to eight, and I want to get over to the mayor's Christmas party at Raspberries. I support the mayor, but I want to use my last two minutes for council comments like this. I want to ask Pastor Gilbert to come up, and I want him to say a prayer for this council, for the mayor, and for this city, and all of the citizens of the city of Flint. I get two minutes, Pastor Gilbert. Is he a Baptist preacher? I know sometimes they pray long. But if I, but I tell you what, if he saved me 30 seconds at the end, I wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, say what I have to say, and then I will entertain a motion to adjourn this last meeting. Pastor Gilbert, I'm that type of guy. I want to pray in one of my last two minutes. Will you do me the pleasure? Eternal God and our Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done this year, 2018. And we realize, Lord, that with your help, we're able to stand here today and say thank you and to give you praise. We pray, O oh God, this day that you will bless our Flint City Council, all the council persons, that they will work as like a hand inside of a glove. Pray, O oh God, for Mayor Weaver and her staff, that you will encamp your angels around about her and protect her and keep her. Bless her family. And bless the citizens of Flint, Lord, because we deserve the very best that our officials can give us and serve us. And we thank you, Lord. Even when we don't always understand, we realize that we're still brothers and sisters. We pray, O oh God, that Flint will be the best city in the United States of America. Bless us to continue to work hard and to be faithful to be open and transparent, but most of all, Lord, we've got to forget the things that are behind us, reaching forth unto the things that are before us, and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We bless you, and we thank you, and we give you glory all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Gill, but I would say in my closing comments, um, you know, we only here for a short period of time on this earth. And we should do what we can do to help each other. And I always like to look and help the least of these. As we go into the holiday season, I wish well to all of the council people, their families, the clerk, our staff, the vena, the legal department, their families, the mayor, um, Mr. Newsom, all of the families. I done picked up two kids at my house with some little kids running around, and I'm just staying in my room for a minute. I might surprise them with some Christmas gifts because I usually run alone. So I want to emphasize families, RL, let's love each other at least for the season because Jesus is the reason for the season. And so. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. I look forward to buckling down and getting back to work next year. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this final council meeting of 2018. Mr. Griggs, he's moved to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. Ms. Winfrey Carter, roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call. Okay, uh, Ms. Worthing? Yes. Ms. Mays? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Five yes, one no. This meeting is adjourned.